Hello students, I hope you all are taking care of your health and also studying from time to time. I welcome you all to this third video of the chapter Force and Pressure. We have discussed about different types of forces in the previous videos. We discussed about contact forces and non-contact forces. Muscular force and frictional force are examples of contact force, whereas gravitational force, electrostatic force and magnetic force are example of non-contact forces. In this video, we shall discuss about another concept, the concept of pressure. Children, have you thought what are the factors which measure the impact of force on an object? Does the magnitude of force alone determine its impact on the surface or on the object? Come, let us explore this. You all must be having a pencil. Mend the pencil at one end. Now, hold the pencil between your index fingers. Gently press the pencil with your fingers. Be careful. Don't hurt yourselves. Why does it feel different at the two ends? Does it pain more on the sharpened side or on the flattened side? Why does the mended side tip push deeper into the skin than the other side? The force exerted by the fingers at each end is same. But why does it hurt more at the mended or the pointed end of the pencil? Why the impact of the force is felt higher at this end? What has changed at this end compared to the other end? Let us observe the area of the two ends of the pencil. We can see the area at the pointed end is much less than the area of the flattened end. So, this activity clearly shows us that the force which is acting at the pointed end is acting through a smaller area, whereas the force which is acting through the flattened end is acting through a larger area. Though the force exerted on both the ends was almost equal, but it was hurting more on the side where the pencil was pointed. This means that the impact of force is depending on the area through which the force is acting. This means the effect of a force on a surface is measured in terms of the area through which it is exerted. We call this as pressure. The pressure is higher at the end where the pencil is sharpened, whereas the pressure is less at the end where the pencil is flattened. Let us learn something more about pressure. Let us consider a surface of area A. Let a force F be acting perpendicular to the surface. Now, the pressure on the surface is obtained by dividing the force acting on it by the area of the surface. The force acting perpendicular is also called as the normal force. So, we use the term normal force. So, children, now can we define pressure? Yes, right. Pressure can be defined as the normal force acting per unit area or pressure can be defined as the total force acting divided by the total area through which the force is acting. Now, let us try to see what will be the unit of this quantity pressure. From the formula of pressure, we know that there must be a unit of force in the numerator and the unit of area in the denominator. The unit of force is Newton and the unit of area is meter square. Therefore, we get the unit of pressure as Newton per meter square. This Newton per meter square is also called as Pascal. Now, let us understand it qualitatively by another situation. 
consider this situation. Let force F be acting on a surface area of A, a force 2 F that is the double of the initial force acting on the same surface area A and a force 3 F that is triple the initial force acting on the same area A. Here area is same in all three cases. However, the normal force acting is different for different surfaces. Can you tell children in which of these three cases the pressure will be higher? Yes, the pressure will be higher in the third case. Now let us consider another case and try to understand something more. We now consider the force F acting through three different areas. The three different areas be A, 2A and 3A. This also means that the same force is acting through three different areas. Now can you tell in which case the pressure will be more? Here the pressure exerted is highest on the surface which has the lowest area and the pressure is lowest on the surface which has the largest area because pressure is given by force divided by area. Now what conclusion can we draw about pressure? On what factors does it depend? Yes, pressure depends on the force applied and the area through which that force is acting. Here we should remember that the force which is acting is normal to the surface. That means the force is perpendicular to the area on which it is acting. The pressure on a surface is directly proportional to the force acting on it that is the normal force acting on it and it is inversely proportional to the area through which the force is acting. The pressure increases in the same ratio as increase in the magnitude of the normal force and the pressure decreases in the same ratio as the increase in the surface area. Children, have you ever tried to walk on sand or walking on a beach which is full of sand? Do you find any difficulty in walking on sand? You must have seen animals like camel walk very easily on sand. Does it have anything to do with pressure? Camels walk easily on sand. Do you know how this is possible? If you observe their feet carefully, their feet has very large area. So what happens? Can you guess? Yes. Now if you try to calculate the pressure on the sand, when the area of the feet is large, the pressure will be less. This is why camels walk on sand easily. We shall take another example from our body. We have different type of teeth, isn't it? We have the incisors, the canines, the molars and the premolars. Have you ever noticed the difference in their shapes? The incisors and the canines are very thin and sharp whereas the molars are flat. If we carefully observe the surface of these teeth or we can feel the surface of the teeth with the help of our tongue, we will see that the molars have the largest area whereas the incisors and the canines have smaller area. So, which teeth do you think will apply more pressure on the food? If you bit the food with the same force, then which of these tooth will apply a greater pressure? I think you all can do this activity and find out the answer. So, we have understood very well now that pressure depends on the normal force acting on the surface and the area through which the force is acting. Now, 
let us do some simple numericals and learn more about pressure. Here is a numerical for you. The value of the normal force acting is 30 Newton. The area A through which it is acting is 15 square centimeter. We have to calculate the pressure P on the surface, isn't it? So, if we try to calculate the pressure, we get that pressure is equal to force divided by area. Force is 30 Newton, whereas area is 15 centimeter square. Here, we need to note that area is given in centimeter square. This gives us the value of pressure as 30 divided by 15, that is 2 Newton per centimeter square. So, the pressure acting is 2 Newton per centimeter square. Children, here you must note that we have expressed the unit as Newton per centimeter square, whereas the SI unit is Newton per meter square if you want to write pressure in Pascal. So, if you want to write this answer in Pascal, then centimeter square has to be converted to meter square. I leave this task for you to convert 2 Newton per centimeter square to Newton per meter square and write the answer in terms of Pascals. Now, let us discuss some effects of pressure in our day to day life. You all must have seen your mother or father using a knife in the kitchen. Why does a knife has to be sharp in order to cut the things? You must have noticed if you try to cut the vegetable or the fruit with the other edge of the knife which is not very sharp, you will find difficulty in cutting. Whereas, the sharp edge of the knife cuts the fruit or the vegetable very easily. Now, can you explain this in terms of pressure? I think you all can. As pressure is related to the force which is acting through the unit area, if we decrease the area, then the pressure increases. So, it becomes very easy for us to cut with a very sharpened knife. The smaller is the area, the lesser is the effort required by us to cut. Children, you all must have seen porters carrying loads on their head, but they keep a folded cloth in a cylindrical shape on their head on which they keep the load. Do you think there is any specific reason for doing so? Does it have to do something with pressure which is acting through the load on the person? Now that you have learnt about pressure, you can always reason for it. If the load is kept without the cloth on the head and if the load is kept on the cloth which is rolled and given a greater area. Let us take another example. Can you ever put a nail inside a wooden plank from the other side that is from the side of the head of the nail? Do you find it difficult to do so? Why? Hammering a nail into a wooden plank from its sharper side is very easy, whereas it will be very difficult for us to hammer the same nail from the other side. I am very sure that you will be able to explain these phenomena with the help of pressure. Most of the times, we are advised not to wear high heel or pointed heel shoes as they have some bad impact on our posture. Does this also have got something to do with pressure? Yes, when we wear pointed heel shoes, the shoes which are pointed at the ends will exert more pressure on the ground and hence more pressure on our body. That is why it is always advisable not to wear very high heel and pointed heel shoes. You also must have seen skiers using long flat skis to slide over the snow. 
Why do the skis have got such shape? Is it to increase the pressure or to decrease it? Can you think about it? There are many such situations where we try to increase or decrease pressure by increasing or decreasing the surface area. Can you think of more situations where we change the area to increase or decrease the pressure? Try to find out more examples and discuss with your friends. So children, let us now summarize what we have learnt in today's video. We learnt that the pressure on a surface is directly proportional to the magnitude of the normal force and is inversely proportional to the area through which the force is acting. The pressure on a surface is calculated by dividing the magnitude of normal force by area. Hence, pressure equals total normal force divided by the area of the surface. The SI unit of pressure is Newton per meter square which is also called as Pascal. In our next video, we will learn more about pressure. Till then, you keep learning more and more from the different sources which are available to you. I thank you all for watching this video. Please take care of your health and keep learning. Thank you.